Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, and today what I have for you is how there are so many different conditions that are actually linked to leaky gut that began in childhood. So for example, there are some really classic childhood ailments such as eczema, food allergies, environmental sensitivities, environmental allergies, as well as asthma. They're showing huge links to those conditions to leaky gut. There are also conditions that will pop up later in adulthood that are actually linked to leaky gut from when we were kids. For example, there's type 1 diabetes, IBS, as well as celiac disease. The scientific literature is linking all of this to leaky gut from the point of childhood. So we all have to wonder, well, why is the gut so important? Why are so many people harping on the importance of the gut immune system? The, per the point is, the, or the purpose of harping on that so much is that your 70% of your immune systems actually found in your gut. That's due to the gut barrier as well as the probiotics that are naturally found in your gut. So we're gonna go over a little bit of how the gut is developed and how we initially get our probiotics. So our gut barrier will develop at 38 weeks of gestation. It's really important to understand because right now preterm babies are on the rise. We're, having a, we're seeing a lot of premature babies and these premature babies are born prior to 38 weeks of gestation, meaning that their gut barrier is not fully developed. So what we usually do for these kids is we load them up by anti on antibiotics and NSAIDs. The point being is that their immune system is not fully developed because that gut barrier is not fully developed. However, those are things that will actually, actually hinder gut barrier development from happening as well. So when we see preterm babies born before 38 weeks of gestation, we're actually seeing more chronic illnesses linked to preterm babies. So how do we get the probiotics? Let's say you have a full term baby and we still see a lot of these conditions popping up. It could be due to the probiotics or the good bacteria that's supposed to be living in their gut. How do they get that good bacteria? Through a vaginal birth as well as breastfeeding. So when kids are born vaginally, they'll actually swallow some of that bacteria from mom. That's how they get their initial set of probiotics. The second time they're introduced is through breast milk. Breast milk is full of things that are so good for gut barrier development, so good to re reduce inflammation, to help with gut barrier development, the immune system to develop and fights off potential infections and things of that sort. It will actually, it will enhance the immune system for the rest of of the child's life. So vaginal birth and breastfeeding are super important in this. However, I meet a lot of people who a vaginal birth simply wasn't possible or breastfeeding simply wasn't possible. There are still a lot of things that can be done to help kids who are popping up with these um, childhood ailments. So for example, probiotics. Probiotics are going to be fantastic, especially at a young age. There's some research that's showing that if you introduce probiotics after the age of two, they don't have simply the, the fantastic effect that they have before the age of two but it's still highly recommended to get that good bacteria living there. That good bacteria is supposed to fight off infections. It's supposed to help with breaking down your nutrients to absorb your food, and it does so, so much more for the, for the immune system. Some other things we can do also is if they are at a point where they can have some solid food, I would soak it in bone broth. It's in the literature that bone broth actually helps with gut barrier development. So what are some things that actually harm the gut barrier as well as the probiotics, or the good bacteria that's supposed to live there? NSAIDs. I meet so many kids that are full or on so many NSAIDs. We give our kids NSAIDs such as ibuprofen and Advil as soon as their fever starts to go up. Or after they get a vaccine and we see some pain and some swelling afterwards, we run to the NSAIDs. Now the point of those is to reduce pain but the problem is that they are hindering the development of something called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins actually help with repairing the gut barrier. So if they're chronically on NSAIDs, we're going to see a breakdown of that gut barrier. Gut infections and inflammation play a huge portion of causing the uh, gut barrier to not develop well. We also have solid foods introduced too early. If the gut barrier is not developed completely yet, then introducing solid foods is going to cause a lot of inflammation. So we're going to see a huge rise in food sensitivities, environmental allergies. It's just going to cause the immune system to go, to go crazy, basically. So solid foods, it's the rule of thumb is solely breastfeeding for at least six months of life. 
Antibiotic usage will also hinder gut development and it'll hinder mostly those probiotics that are supposed to live there. Reason being, when you take an antibiotic when you're sick, when you have a bacterial infection, it's kind of like swallowing a bomb. You're gonna kill off the bad bacteria, but you're also gonna kill off some of the good bacteria that's supposed to be there. So when you're taking an antibiotic, it's also really important to make sure you're supplementing with a probiotic. So that's your lesson for today about how a lot of adult illnesses, especially autoimmune conditions, and some of the classic childhood illnesses are linked to leaky gut. If you found this video interesting, I have lots more information like this on our website, iBrainAndBody.com. We're also hosting a purely whole, it's going to be about an hour's worth of information all for Leaky Gut on October 25th at 7.30 p.m. It's going to be on Facebook Live, so you get to watch us right from, from home. All right, so I hope to see you October 25th, and I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy the rest of your day.